believe, Lord, that these, these few moments that we have together tonight can be holy ones and life-changing ones, city-altering ones. And so we welcome you here to lead us, to guide us by your Spirit. Lord, we agree with Romans 8. It says we don't know how to pray as we ought, but that you, by your Holy Spirit, will pray through us and in us. Sometimes it says, God, even with groanings and utterances too deep for words, often, Lord, I find myself without words, just yearnings. So we invite you to guide us, to lead us. According to your will tonight, God, may we partner with you in this holy thing. We welcome you to this place with our thanksgiving, with our praise. We say we're grateful tonight. Grateful for what you've done, Father, through Jesus. Grateful, God, for what you do, Father, through your spirit. We're so glad that you're our Father. We praise you tonight. For all that you are to us, God, and all that you are for us. And even though we don't have the smallest idea of what you're really like, we're, we're grateful for all that we know of you. So we invite you to lead us, guide us tonight, start us and right into the paths, God, that you have for us. We commit this night into your hands now in Jesus' name.
Tonight we're going to be praying for the church here in St. Louis, the metropolitan area. And uh, tonight as we pray, we uh, just say this every time that we're here to worship and pray together. If you have a prayer in your heart that you would like others to add their amen to, come up here and sit in this front row and we'll nod you in so that you can pray so that we can agree together. Praying for the church, we believe God has great plans for his church universally and internationally and all of that but also for the church here in St. Louis. Just praying and pondering today, thinking of how sin in the church has damaged the church recently and maybe in every season, I'm just more aware of it in this season. But even this last week at that, uh, some gigantic church in Houston, there was a shooting and so attacks from without and attacks maybe from within. But it says here in Ephesians 5, that Jesus loves his church. It says in verse 28, husbands ought to also love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. Uh, wait, I'm reading, yeah. I uh, loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Tonight we're glad, Lord, that you nourish and cherish your church. Earlier in this passage, Lord, you said that men should love their wives like Christ loves the church. And Lord, tonight, before we make a lot of requests about what we want you to do and what we're calling out to you to do in the church here in St. Louis, just say it to you, Lord, I'm grateful tonight that you love your church. You're not in heaven wagging your finger at the church. You love your church. You nourish and cherish your church, your people. And so tonight, God, the church has taken on a lot of, you know, stuff lately, difficulty. But you nourish and cherish the church. And so tonight, God, we simply say thank you. Thank you for loving the body of Christ. Thank you for loving your people, God. Thank you for your affection, your desire, your goals, your wants, your longings for your bride, God, that you love your bride. You love your followers. You love your church. And it says here in Ephesians 5 that you nourish it and cherish it. And so, Lord, I'm praying tonight that right here in St. Louis, your church here in St. Louis, we begin to understand the very longing of your heart toward us. We begin to understand, God, that you have great desire, great longing, great affection, great intention for your church, for your people, God, for the ones that are called by your name. Tonight, God, I'm praying for a river of revelation to come to your church in St. Louis, that we are nourished and cherished by you, that you are for us and not against us, that you have plans that are spectacular for us, God, for the church here in St. Louis. So I cry out to you tonight, God, reveal to your church the character, the desire, the longing, the affection in your heart toward us. Open our eyes to how much you love us. God, individually, but how you love your church, how you love your bride. I pray, God, awaken our hearts to your affections, to your affection, to your desires for us now. I'm asking you for that, Father, in Jesus' name.
up, God. You said when we see you, we'll be like you. You said we, we love because you first loved us. So, Lord, I pray awaken the knowledge of your love for us and your church here in St. Louis. May that be a hallmark of the, the part of the body that lives in this metropolitan area, God, on the north and the south, the east and the west regions of this city, God, the church, the folks that call on your name. I'm just mindful that today is Ash Wednesday and many of the ecumenical, uh, the like kind of the more liturgical churches, they're setting their hearts to, for a season of Lent, a season of devotion to you. God, we pray that you would bless them. We pray that you bless that part of the church, God, that's that's practicing this thing that maybe I don't understand fully, God, but it's, it's some act of devotion that they're doing on a singular day, but may, many of them for a whole season now to give up something or to sacrifice something. And Lord, I'm asking today that by the abundance of your grace, that the folks in the liturgical part of your church here in St. Louis, they would run smack into the will of God while they're doing these things. They would just bang, I mean, like just be confronted with how beautiful you are, how great you are, how you love them. We cry out to you, God, for the Lutherans and the Catholics and the Episcopalians, God, that are, that are practicing some form of that today and for the next several weeks. God, awaken them to how real you are, how much you love them, God, how much you desire them and how much you want to bless them asking you to do that, Lord, I cry out to you for it. In Matthew 16, Jesus, you said that you will build your church and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Lord, tonight I'm asking you to build your church here in St. Louis, to build a church that stands strong in the midst of opposition. A church that walks in holiness in the midst of the onslaught of perversion in our nation. God, you said you would build your church. Lord, you're calling us to cooperate with you, to walk with you, but you said that you were going to build our build your church. And so tonight we welcome the building, the construction, the blueprints, the strategies, the anointings of the Holy Spirit. God, build your church in St. Louis. Build a church that will stand strong against the attack, the, the, the uh, schemes of the evil one. Tonight, Jesus, build your church in St. Louis. God, right here in Sunset Hills, in the south part of the community. God, up in Ferguson and Flores and the North St. Louis. God, in Chesterfield and Baldwin and those places. God, in Midtown. On the east side, God, in Carbondale, uh, in, in Granite City, in Edwardsville, in Columbia, God, we cry out to you tonight, build your church. Build a church that's vibrant and overcomes the defense mechanisms of the evil one. Build your church that's strong and vibrant and overcoming against the powers of, and forces of wickedness in the heavenlies. Oh God, I'm asking tonight for a church in St. Louis that's triumphant. God, not one that's arrogant, but one that triumphs over the powers of darkness. Would you build a virile, strong, vibrant, overcoming church in St. Louis? I'm trusting you to do that. God, I believe you want to build a church right here in the heartland of America that overcomes, that triumphs, that pushes back the powers of darkness. Oh God, that your light would shine in this city through a triumphant, through a prevailing, through an overcoming church. God, all those promises in the book of Revelation of those seven churches, you said to the one that overcomes, I will do this or I will do that. Lord, I'm praying today that the church in St. Louis would become one of those overcoming churches. I'm asking you for it, Father, in the, in the Jesus' powerful name. up your church to be what you wanted it to be. Overcomers in Jesus' name. Let them overcome, overcome every obstacle in the way. Salt of the earth and light in the darkness that they be salt of the earth.
of us, God, that we might be a holy temple in the Lord, a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Lord, that people, that outsiders would behold your church, that they would see God in the midst of them. God in the midst of them, that we collectively would be the dwelling of God in the Spirit the holy temple of God, God's household. Lord, that the outsiders would see the beauty, the glory, the reality, the shining light of who you are. Oh God, I'm crying out tonight that your church would begin to look more like you, would represent you in a more full way. We would be the dwelling of God in the spirit. God, we're so lacking that tonight. God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for that tonight. God, for the church to be a dwelling of God, a place where you dwell amongst us. And the unbelievers come in and they just encounter you because there's the dwelling of God in the midst of your people. Oh God, they would behold you because we are your household. They would see the, 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 the value of worshiping you because we are the holy temple of God. Oh Lord, I pray that you would come and visit the church in St. Louis with the very tangible presence of God, the very glory of God, the very tangible expression of who you are in the midst of your people. Would we gather together like this when we meet in small groups or maybe when we're just 
out and about, God, that they would encounter the glory of God in your church. Oh, God, let us be a dwelling of God in the Spirit. I'm trusting you, God, for a brand new visitation of the real presence of God in the church here in St. Louis. seven churches in the book of Revelation, you said that we should hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Over and over you said that. You said all seven times we could become overcomers, but there was that repeated phrase that him who hears what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Lord, I pray tonight that we could hear your voice. We could hear your direction. 
for your bride in this city. God, individual congregations, but right across the city. Lord, that we would hear your heart. God, I don't mean that every church is going to be the same, but, but that we would hear your heart of holiness, your heart of affection, your heart of purity of heart, that, that we might be a pure bride, a fervent bride, a faithful one. My God, I'm asking tonight that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church here in St. Louis. Cry out to you, God. Yes, for spiritual direction like wisdom and strategies and ministry, but, but more than that, God, the, the, what's on your heart for your people? How do we respond, God, in purity and brokenness and faithfulness? Before you, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to the church? In St. Louis, we cry out to you for the knowledge of your will. For this city, God, for this church, for us in this room, God, for the churches we represent, we say, God, would you speak, Holy Spirit, would you speak to the individual leaders and churches, you know, the individual church leaderships all over St. Louis, but, but right across the community. It says here in Ephesians 3, Lord, that, that the manifold wisdom of God would be, that your desire is that the manifold wisdom of God would now be made known through your church, through two powers and principalities and spiritual forces. Lord, I'm asking tonight, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit wisdom, come to the church in St. Louis, that we might demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God to a watching world and to powers and principalities because we've simply heard your voice because we've simply understood your will. Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and speak to the church of St. Louis. Where do we need to turn, God? What things need to be shaken? What things need to be broken off? What areas really need the cleansing fire of God that, that chorus we were just singing? We cry out to you for the purifying work of your spirit by the very voice of God by the very presence of God, by your fire, God, that would cause us to tremble, cause us to begin to understand something of the fear of the Lord which would lead us to the manifold wisdom of God. Oh, we cry out to you for that tonight. Holy Spirit, come and speak to the churches in St. Louis, the church in St. Louis, that we might respond and we might demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God because we've heard your voice, not because we read the latest church growth book or ministry style book or we heard an anointed preacher, God, but the Holy Spirit would speak to his church that we would be able to demonstrate your manifold wisdom. I cry out to you for it tonight. The angels came and spoke to the shepherds. Lord, I'm praying tonight, come and speak to the shepherds all over this city. If they need angelic visitations, Lord, please bring them. We need, we're in desperate need, oh God, for the, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in our church, this city, today, in this season. God, if need be, send the angels to the shepherds. They need to see. They need to know. Speak to your church, I pray. Your beloved church that you nourish and cherish. Let a prophetic voice ring out in this city once again. A voice, God, that would shift the, demand, the direction, shift the heart posture of the church in St. Louis. That we might, God, be a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Demonstrate your manifold wisdom. Be an overcoming church because we've heard your voice. Because we've seen the direction. Because we've heard your heart. Because we believed in your love. Oh, I'm crying out to you, God, for a complete renovation of the church. 
here in St. Louis by the very voice of God, the very voice of your spirit in the midst of your people. Perhaps you would sing it over us like it says in Zephaniah, but God send the voice of your spirit to your church that we might walk in the fullness of what you've called us to do, the fullness of what you want for the church in St. Louis. I'm trusting you for that miraculous kind of alteration in our city. Trusting you for it, God. Even the beginning of it here right in 2024, I believe this is a year, God, when you want to begin to make it different. The church would be starting to be altered in a very significant way. So I'm trusting you for it now. I commit my heart to following that, whatever you say. We declare it over the church in St. Louis. Hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear his words of cherishing and nourishing. Hear his words of correction. Hear his words of alteration and change. We declare it over the church tonight. The voice of the Holy Spirit. Yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit, Church of St. Louis. Shepherds in St. Louis, yield. We declare it tonight. In Jesus' name. Start with me tonight, my Lord. Start with my heart right here. 
It looks like Yeshua. Refine your bride to be like you, Jesus. We cry tonight. Refine your bride. We cry tonight. Come refine your bride in St. Louis and bring unity. said we'd be known by our love for one another so make it so refined and bright in unity refined and bright in holiness refined and bright tonight send the refiners fire this is our heart's desire that you would send the refiners fire even now, come send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire that you'd send the refiner's fire. Even now, send the refiner's fire. Send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire. Even now, send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire that you would send the refiner's fire. Even now, we pray, come, send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire that you would send the refiner's fire. Even now, as I pray, would you send the refiner's fire? This is our heart's desire. Send the refiner's fire. Even now, and bring our hearts to thy Lord. Send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire. You send the refiner's fire. Even now, as we pray, send the refiner's fire. This is our heart's desire. Send the refiner's fire. Even now, send the refiner's fire. This is my heart's desire. You send the
There's a thousand generations are falling down in worship to sing song of ages to the Lamb. Cause all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing song of ages to the Lamb. A thousand generations are falling down in worship to sing song of ages to the Lamb. And all who have gone before us and all who will believe will sing song of ages to the Lamb. Cause your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name it stands above them all above all thrones and dominions and all powers and positions your name stands above them all your name it's your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all above all the roads and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all all the angels cry
is the greatest in your name it stands above them all above all the thrones and dominions all powers and positions it's your name that stands above them all sing your name it's your name is the highest is your name is the greatest in your name stands above them all above all the roads and the minions it's all parts and positions your name stands above them all sing it out again your name it's your name it's the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all above all the thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all as the angels cry you all You're beautiful. 
Yes, you're beautiful Cause you're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful Yes, you are So beautiful See you, see you right. 
light out of Psalm 27. It says here, you're our light, our salvation. We don't have to fear. We're so grateful tonight that you, nothing else, God, you are our light. You are our salvation. We don't have to fear anybody else. We don't have to fear any other thing. It says here in verse 1, Lord, that you are the defense of our lives. We don't have to dread. Lord, tonight, so many in your body, so many of your followers are in dread. So we just pray tonight, God, for an outpouring of understanding that you are our light. You are our salvation. We don't have to fear. We don't have to dread. You are the defense of our lives. Tonight, God, we're grateful that you are the defense of our lives. You are our light. You are our salvation. Even when evildoers come our way, adversaries and enemies, though a host encamp around us, David said his heart would not fear. The war raised against him in spite of all of that. He said he would be confident. Lord, tonight we choose confidence. We choose to declare, God, that you are our light. You are our salvation. You are the defense of our lives. We reject dread tonight. We reject fear tonight. We reject those things, Lord, tonight that seem to be like a host and camping around us. We reject fear tonight, God. We declare it. We'll be confident, God. Our enemies, they stumble and they fall, it says in verse 2. Lord, tonight we choose confidence in the living God. Not confidence in our own strength or our own willpower, but in you, God, our light, our salvation the defense of our lives. We put confidence in you tonight, God. Peter said we could cast all of our cares on you because you care for us. Tonight we say it, Lord, no dread, no fear. We put confidence in the Almighty. We put confidence in the light and our salvation. We put confidence in the defense of our lives. His name is Jesus. We will not fear. We will not dread. We choose confidence in the living God. We say it tonight, God, though a host and camp around us, we will not fear. Though evildoers plan and scheme against us, we will not, we will not fear. We will be confident. Not because we're good enough. Not because we'll hang on strong enough. God, but because you are faithful. You are the defense of our lives. You are our light and our salvation. You are our light and our salvation. You are our light and our salvation. We put our trust in you tonight. We bless your mighty name.
temple, he will conceal thee in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide thee. He will lift thee up on a rock. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. God, we're grateful tonight that even in days of trouble, even when there are things that are hard, God, things that are, you know, difficult, things that are challenging, we just say it tonight, God, you promised you, you said it here, you would conceal us in your tent, in your tabernacle. In the secret place of your tent, you would hide us. You would lift us up on a rock. Our heads would be lifted up above our enemies. So tonight we choose to offer sacrifices of praise. Tonight we choose, Lord, to lift up our voice, to sing, yes, to sing praises to the Lord. My head will be lifted up above my enemies. You will hide me in your tent. You will hide me in my ta in your tabernacle. My head will be lifted up above my enemies. I declare it tonight. I'm grateful for it tonight. So we choose, Lord, to offer sacrifices of praise. We choose tonight to lift our voices and to bring you praise, to offer our thanks, to offer our praises to the one who lifts our heads up above our enemies. We praise your mighty name. on you and not be disappointed. Our feet on a rock. Our heads lifted up. Well, we're going to finish tonight praying for our ministry prayer focus of the week and it's the ministry called Bound for Life St. Louis. Jeremy and Melissa, Melissa and Jacobs lead that ministry. They're a prayer and mobilization ministry. 
that intercede and stand for life. They're the ones you see with red tape on their mouths. And they pray outside of abortion clinics, and government offices, and court buildings, and those kinds of things. Good friends of ours, they help lead prayer here at the House of Prayer as well. They've got some prayer requests. We're going to mention them briefly. The that life would be protected within Missouri's borders in 2024. There are some attempts being made on the legal side to make abortion uh, constitutionally legal in, in Missouri. They also desire, uh, they're praying against that. They also desire to see a Bound for Life chapter started in Illinois. And they're calling out for protection for their own family as they confront spiritual wickedness. So Lord, tonight we do pray, we join our prayers with Jeremy and Melissa, and the others that are a part of Bound for Life. Lord, we pray against this petition that's circulating in Missouri right now about bringing it on the ballot to making, uh, to making it constitutional, set in stone, that abortions would be rampant in our state. We pray against that tonight, God, against that petition movement, against that activity. We pray, God, that you would raise up a standard against that and strike that thing down. We pray for our politicians that they would be wiser. They would choose life in all of their decisions. And Lord, we're hungry for a Bound for Life chapter in Illinois. It's such a pro-abortion state. God, I pray that you would get a foothold in Illinois through a Bound for Life chapter starting there. We trust you to do something, God, in the Metro East related to Bound for Life. And we do pray for Jeremy and Melissa tonight, all of their children. You would cover them, protect them, bless them. We pray against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenlies that would assault our friends. We say the Lord rebuke you. We command you to stay away from our friends, Jeremy and Melissa, their children. We declare them off limits to the powers and principalities, the scheming forces that would attack them. We rebuke you now in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we speak blessing over the Jacob's household, each one of their children, their health, the health of their cars, their homes, in every facet of their lives. God bless them, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, trust you for great things on their behalf. And we thank you for it, Father. Well, amen. And we'll end our uh, prayer meeting tonight and uh, for the day here at the Gateway House of Prayer. We open back up tomorrow at 9 a.m. all the way till 9 p.m. tomorrow night. So grateful for this place and for you people that have been with us and the people that have been with us all day in different times and seasons and the folks on the live stream. I just want to pray over you and will. And Lord, I'm grateful to you for the 12 hours of prayer in this place today. I'm grateful, God, not just for prayers, but that you were answering prayers that were prayed for the last 12 hours in this place and through people on the live stream. Father, I'm asking that you would bless each and every one of them that are here right now, watching right now, but the ones that have been here all day long and, you know, different times, pray that you would answer their prayers. God, you would awaken their hearts with the knowledge of who you are. You would refresh their souls with the knowledge of your deep affection for them. Pour out your spirit on the precious ones that are a part of all that goes on here. Lord, we pray that you would raise up your house of prayer in this city. God, in this location, but in many other places, God, that you would raise up your house of prayer. I pray for blessing for these people here. God, as they travel home, you would keep them safe. You would speak to them in the night. God, dreams, visions, even in the night for the different ones that have been here. I trust you to do that. Father, we commit ourselves to you as we leave this place. We were singing earlier about something about uh, with all of our heart, with all of our heart, we choose to follow you. God, we just say that tonight as our, as our closing commitment. With all of our hearts, we want to follow you. With all of our hearts, 
We want to be devoted to you. That's our desire. That's our longing. Make that our declare, our declaration time as we end this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Thanks for being with us tonight. All day long. Bless you. Have a good evening.